Hello everyone, welcome to a Let's Play Command at Sea Naval Miniatures game. Uh, in today's game, we're going to be playing in a slightly different format. Rather than seeing all the individual roles and movements and shooting and all that, I'm basically going to provide you guys kind of like a play-by-play. -play. I'll edit it down to make it a little bit shorter. So if you remember from my last Command at Sea video, we had a situation where the Graf Spey tracked down the Athene merchant vessel and uh, pretty much leveled it. Uh, today, there's some good news though, or bad news, depending on whose side you are on. There is a British cruiser group led by the X Exeter, followed by the Achilles and the Ajax that are on the hunt for this German pocket battleship. The uh, folks of you guys at home might recognize this as the Battle of the River Plate. But uh, what we're going to do a little differently is we're going to try to treat it as if it's kind of in campaign mode at Command at Sea. So uh, to get us started, where it's at 4 o'clock in the morning, I've dimmed the lights a little bit here to simulate. It'd be a heck of a lot darker than this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, proceed to uh, 4.30. That's going to be the full length of an intermediate turn to see what happens. So half an hour has passed. Um, all the different ships have gone ahead and proceeded to uh, do their initial movements. Uh, we can see here that the Exeter, the Achilles, and the Ajax are still cruising. In the Admiral Graf Bay is way, way, way over there. At this present time, there is a distance between them of about 58. Uh, let's see, that would be almost 30,000 yards, which is quite a bit. At this time of day in this sea state, they're not going to actually see each other unless they come in within 22,000 yards. So it's going to be um, maybe a little while. The Graf Spay does have radar, but that doesn't actually help him very much because it's actually only got about a 14,000 yard range on it at this time. It'd be useful at night, but not so much during the day. So we're going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit and uh, see what happens next. Okay. So uh, a little bit of time has passed. This has been another half of an hour. It's getting a little bit brighter outside, as you can see. And now the Graf Spay is actually within 18,000 yards of these ships and was actually able to uh, spot all of them and uh, decided to go ahead and accelerate a little bit to see what's going on. The British, unfortunately, were not able to spot the Graf Spay at this time. So it'll be kind of interesting to see uh, when the actual shooting starts and when it happens. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and continue. All right, it's now about 5.15 a.m. It's getting a little brighter outside. And you can see that the Graf Spey and the Exeter have actually closed very significantly. In this particular case, the Graf Spey was not able to identify the English ships right away. However, the Exeter was able to uh, go ahead and identify the Graf Spey being what it was at that particular range. So it's actually going to attack right away, forcing the Graf Spey to actually work during his um, reaction fire turn if he chooses to engage. So our first turn is just passed, and a very, very interesting turn indeed. Um, the Exeter was able to open fire without the Graf Spey uh, opening fire itself, which uh, meant it got kind of like a free hit and was successful in actually damaging the Graf Spey. Not too, too much damage in that particular case, but it did kind of warm things up just a little bit. The Achilles and the Ajax in this time actually left out for the shooting because they haven't quite communicated everything. The Graf Spey returned fire in the reaction and actually managed to score a critical hit on the Exeter, knocking out the fire control in the primary battery. So uh, even though the Exeter got the jump, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the end of the fight. We'll now take a look what happens with the next turn. So that was an eventful turn. Um, gunshots were fired between each different one of the ships here. Um, some of the ships on this side went ahead and uh, I should say the Graf Spey was able to get a barely d glancing hit with some secondary on the Exeter. The Achilles and the Ajax both scored general hits and the Exeter also scared general hits. Um, the uh, Graf Spey at this point has taken a critical hit. In this case, it was the rudder damage on this one. And it's also taken enough damage at this point in the game to actually reduce its top speed a little bit, which is going to make things a little bit more interesting when we move into the next turn. So that was another incredible turn as far as what happened. So at this point, uh, the Exeter and the Graf Spey continued to trade fire with uh, weapons. Uh, the Exeter really, really got hit very bad this turn, but miraculously suffered not a single critical hit, despite losing almost uh, about a third at this point of his total hull points. The Achilles and the Ajax, of course, are charging at the Graf Spey. They managed to get some very, very light damage to the Graf Spey itself. And the Graf Spey, of course, is um, definitely starting to get pecked at a little bit. The two guns off of these guys only do something like 6 or 7 damage per hit, and they're barely getting anything on the Graf Spey, but it's definitely starting to take its toll, as just last turn, the Graf Spey has um, light a 
anti-aircraft damage, it has an engineering critical, and most important of all, it lost its fire control radar, which is going to make it significantly more difficult to engage the English ships. Um, at this particular point in the game, taking a look at his hit points, um, he's past the 50% point, which means his new top speed is actually only 14. So as a result, it's going to become a lot easier for the English to engage them. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do it. The critical hit on the rudder still stands at this point, which is going to make things kind of interesting, but it also means I wouldn't be surprised if the English kind of, you know, swing around both sides and try to, like, bracket the ship to uh, prevent it from doing too, too much stuff in one direction at one time. But we'll see what happens during the next turn. A couple interesting engagements during that turn as well. Um, just taking a look around real quick, the Graf Spey and the Exeter continue to exchange glances with all their batteries back and forth. In this particular case, the uh, Graf Spey didn't even get hit at all by the Exeter, but the Exeter got hammered by main battery hits all down the side of it and suffered a critical hit causing flooding, which we're going to have to deal with in three turns. Meanwhile, the Achilles and Ajax just were not able to bring enough guns to bear on the Graf Spey to really do any significant damage to it. So uh, things are starting to get a little interesting. Historically, as you guys probably are well aware, the Exeter did get pounded pretty bad, but the Graf Spey actually escaped. Um, we have one more turn to check on the Graf Spey to see whether or not that rudder comes back online. In the event that it doesn't, I expect the Achilles and the Ajax to start plugging it with torpedoes. I wouldn't be surprised if we get some uh, target changes at this time to see what will happen. So in that turn, it is now 5.27 a.m. in the morning. Uh, interesting, the Graf Spey continued to pound the Exeter. The Exeter now is down to crippled status. It only has a top speed of about 4. It's on fire. It's starting to flood, but its main guns are still barking. We get to find out what actually happens with that flooding in two turns. The Achilles and the Ajax, meanwhile, just can't seem to do enough damage to the Graf Spey because of that pretty thick armor on it. So they're hoping to close the range and maybe use torpedoes. On the flip side, the Graf Spey itself, taking a look at its hit points right now, it's at 290 five damage out of its maximum of 341, which actually puts it almost uh, to 75% of the way completely disabled. So uh, the upcoming turn here, we're definitely going to be hoping that we can do a little bit more damage and do something with the Exeter to protect it, because uh, that Graf Spey, if it gets another round of those main hits, we might lose the Exeter completely, which would be an interesting Fyrick victory here. So we'll have to see exactly what happens. It's now 5.30 in the morning, and um, things are getting a little brighter outside. Kind of an interesting little exchange last turn. Uh, the Achilles and the Ajax, uh, I thought they were in torpedo range, but they're actually just shy. You have to remember, the real scale of these things is not nearly what it appears on this desktop here. The uh, Graf Spey actually changed fire and tried to attack the Achilles, uh, using local control to attack the Exeter, but the battle ended up actually doing nothing for it. Meanwhile, the Exeter um, completely uselessly tried to attack the Graf Spey to actually do some damage. Um, interestingly enough, next turn we're going to find out whether or not all this fire and flooding damage is contained or if it's actually going to level this vessel, uh, the Exeter in this case. Um, it's already taking significantly more damage than actually happened at the real Battle of the River Plate. Of course, in the real Battle of the River Plate, the Graf Spey would be over here somewhere just about the Montevideo once it realized things weren't going its way. All right. It is now 5.33 a.m., and uh, things were definitely interesting that turn. The uh, Graf Spey's fire was mostly impotent. The Ajax and Achilles continue to peck away one shot at a time, the Exeter also having a heck of a time. So um, we've actually skipped right to the damage phase, because we're interested to see whether or not the Exeter is going to slip under the waves. As it stands at this time, it is suffering from 3 flooding, 3% 3 flooding, and 3% fire. So in this particular case, we're actually going to go ahead and roll to see what happens. We get to subtract 2 from this roll. This is going to be for the fire damage. So we get a 4. So 4 minus 2 is a minus 2d6. So if this total is to be a 3 or greater, the fire end up getting under control and the Exeter will not sink. Perfect. 7. So the Exeter manages to put out its fire. How about its flooding damage? So we're going to go ahead and roll again. Hopefully this is a 1 or 2 or something like that. So it's a 4 again, which is a 2. This needs to be a 3 or greater, otherwise the Exeter will sink. Lucky. 
So the Exeter lives to fight another day. Its current damage, by the way, is 240 out of 244. So it's not doing so hot. But miraculously, it was able to put out the fire and the flooding through the fire and the flames on this particular ship. The Graf Spey and the flip side, speaking of which, on the last turn, continues to take an incredible amount of pounding. It's up to 322 damage, which puts it way past the 90% bracket. The Achilles and Ajax are guaranteed to launch torpedoes next turn to finish the job and um if the torpedoes don't do it this fire that it's suffering from right at this time is probably going to do it for us but uh we're going to continue firing and uh for all we know the graph space is going to get that one last shot off at the exeter that's actually going to sink it so at least it can take down a british ship with it so here we are, three minutes of battle later, and uh, the Graf Spey desperately attempted to fire at all the other ships and was unable to hit. Uh, the Achilles and the Ajax were right about to launch torpedoes, but I said, you know, save the torpedoes, we might need them another day. And the Exeter delivered the killing blow right as it was time to check to see the progress of the fires and the flooding on the Graf Spey. So the Graf Spey ends up getting pummeled by gunfire, it took a heck of a fight, and ended up putting the Exeter down very, 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 very low as far as hit points goes. But in Incredibly, even though it's got four hit points left, it was able to stay in the fight. So it's got to really, really watch itself and hope it doesn't have any difficulty with bad weather. It's going to be going to Montevideo itself. So at the end of the day, the Graf Spey was sunk. Um, these two ships, the Ajax and the Achilles, took no damage whatsoever. The Exeter, as I said, took quite a bit of pounding. Um, very interesting turnout for this fight. The whole battle only took about half of an hour, which, again, was probably attributed to how close of a range we did it at. Historically, um, the battle was done at a much, much longer, you know, 8 to 10 nautical mile range. So there was a lot more missing going on. But because we did it so close, it ended up being a very lethal battle, and it actually got it over with really early. I was really hoping to see um, if the torpedoes would succeed at destroy doing the deed for me but um, i never actually got a chance to fire them because it was always going to be a chase and the torpedoes would have ended up chasing and they never would have ended up heading anything anyway so that's something going forward i should have really swapped these two guys with this guy and tried to get him to cut off that particular ship the graf spay in order to get that torpedo attack historically there was a torpedo attack but it was at like 10,000 yards so it was like a complete waste of torpedoes so anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed that um if you like the format where i skip all the calculations and dicing. I can continue with that. Otherwise, um, this seems to work pretty well. All right. Thanks.